How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Lead Therapy and thank you so very much for taking time for tuning into my video. Earlier this year, it was reported that three Canadian provinces have opposed the federal government's assault weapons confiscation law and refused to allow provincial resources to be used in enforcing the gun ban and so-called buyback of legally acquired firearms. At the end of September, officials representing the Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Manitoba governments had notified Marco Mendocino, the federal minister responsible for implementing Prime Minister Trudeau's gun ban and confiscation law, that they would not authorize the use of provincially funded resources to implement the program within their jurisdictions. Since then, officials in Yukon and New Brunswick have likewise expressed the view that the federal gun grab should not be piggybacked on provincial resources. On October 12th, members of the Legislative Assembly of Yukon adopted motion number 436, urging the Yukon government to ensure that territorial policing resources are not diverted to assist in the implementation of the Government of Canada's buyback program. Brad Cathers, the Yukon Party MLA, an official opposition justice critic who introduced the motion, referred to the provinces that already had come out in opposition and reminded MLAs about the Liberal Party's failed long gun registry, eventually scrapped after going massively over its original budget and wasting billions of dollars. In his lengthy remarks, Cathers emphasized the broader principle that in a healthy society, it was important for people to feel that, while they may not agree with the government of the day, generally speaking, the government is trying to protect their rights and they're looking out for them. It's important to remember that we need to respect what our fellow Canadians value, even if it's not important to us. The right to own firearms is very important to a great many Canadians. The past practice in Canada, he said, had been that firearms that became illegal due to a change in the law could still be kept by the owners but not resold. The change and a step across the line into what has been called a buyback program in fact is confiscation and is a major change that is deeply disturbing to many Canadians who value property rights. It's a gentle sounding term for what it really is, the forced confiscation of private property. For many Canadians and many Yukoners, the principle of that is not acceptable. Responding to the Minister of Justice, Liberal MLA Tracy Ann McPhee advised that the Liberal MLAs would not be supporting the motion as it is simply speculative at this point. However, she confirmed that we do not have the administrative resources, the personnel resources or the financial resources at RCMP M Division to participate in what might be conceived of as a buyback program. I say might be because the scope of that program and the details of that program have not yet been designed and not yet been released. Soon after, New Brunswick became the latest province to tell the feds they'd have to find the means elsewhere from seizing firearms from responsible Canadians. An October 14 press release from New Brunswick's Department of Justice and Public Safety quoted Public Safety Minister Chris Austin. New Brunswick's bottom line is this. RCMP resources are spread thin as it is. We have made it clear to the government of Canada that we cannot condone any use of those limited resources at all in their planned buyback program. In common with Prairie Provinces, New Brunswick called on the federal government to halt plans to use scarce RCMP and municipal police resources to confiscate over 100,000 legally acquired firearms from Canadians and ask the federal government not to divert funding for any other public safety initiatives to make the confiscation program possible. The Canadian Shooting Sports Association is urging Canadians in remaining provinces to contact elected officials and likewise ask they refuse to allow provincial resources to be redirected to confiscating guns from licensed gun owners just because Justin Trudeau lost his progressive crown to gun banning Jacinda Ardern in 2019. Besides the critical issues of who will pay and what it will cost, these officials should consider what's behind the shocking failure of Trudeau's government to publicly disclose almost all the details of how the proposed buyback is expected to work. The already expanded amnesty period is due to expire in less than a year. Yet, as the Justice Minister in Yukon confirms, at this late date, the scope of the program and the details of that program have not yet been designed and not yet been released. It sounds like soy boy Trudeau has got some trouble on his hands. 
It'll be interesting to find out what happens with this situation. As always, please let me know your thoughts about the story in the comment section down below. And if you guys would please do me a favor and help the channel out by liking, sharing, and subscribing and hitting those post notifications, it would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video.